just the fact that you offer different modes of transport, how that gives you a competitive uh, edge, if it gives you a competitive edge, and how that you use that competitive edge uh, to be ahead of the competition, maybe. Yeah, I think there there is, uh, of course, you can improve a lot with data. Every decision we make is data-driven. Even marketing, operations, customer support, everything we do is data-driven. We have now over a million customers using our, our platform. So if you have a million customers using the service on a daily basis, you get so much information that, of course, we can use. And I think most interesting is that if you offer all all transport modes, you also get more uh, um, uh, customers that are returning uh, because yeah. they can use it on a daily basis. And the interesting part is if you if you imagine that uh, getting someone in for a car subscription costs you 20 euro, but for just using a bike once a euro, a customer acquisition cost, yeah. then the cross-selling and upselling inside the app is, of course, way easier than to have it externally. So it's so much easier to keep people active in your, your system and making sure you know what to offer them. Um, yeah, th 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 that's the addiction. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, the, I mean, data is, is quite important in terms of um, being ahead of the competition because I guess data tells you where the, um, the future is going, right? I mean, it's, it's, in a way it shows you the future, I think, uh, at least I believe. Uh, now, you have quite um, an interesting stra strategy in terms of uh, expansion. Um, I always wondered why uh, I even wrote my opinion and um, and insight.com uh, reg regarding uh, this. I always wondered why a lot of mobility companies raise so much money, but they use the money more to you know expand using internally or you know uh, on their hardware or whatever. But why not? acquire operators who are already, you know, have the local knowledge somewhere, who, who already, you know, um, have like a brand there. It seems so much more efficient um, and, yeah, better maybe than going there yourself uh, and try to compete with them. That's why I, I was, I really applaud uh, Thiers and their strategy by buying Next Bike because, I mean, that's amazing and now buying Spin. It's that for me, I think that is a sustainable strategy of growth, and yeah, uh, unbelievable. The, the, yeah, and it, I mean the, the team at TIA are doing an amazing thing as well. Uh, but Go Sharing uh, has also been doing this, right? Uh, you recently acquired an Italian operator. Yeah. Can you please explain uh, the process that went into making that decision? Uh, I would like to see the behind the scene and, you know, what you thought about with your team and why, uh, because those are the things you don't get to see, right? We only see the press release, <laughs> but that's not, that's not the cool thing, right? You want to see the, the behind the scene. That's, that's what really matters. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure, for sure. So I, I always like if you have a local team that it's really entrepreneurs because you need like real entrepreneurs running it as their own business. So every country we have, they are local entrepreneurs. So for example, Belgium, we took over the team of uh, Scooty, a local operator. Um, if you look at Germany, we took over, it was a small m and we took over Tribe Sharing, which was a small operator, but really uh, doing well in his business. He just didn't have the skill. So we said, if we take you over, we can we can give you the skill and making sure that a real entrepreneur can also use his knowledge and not doing everything himself. Um, so every country really have entrepreneurs and there are always three ways to start a new country. You can either partner with a, a different company, but I always think it's hard in sharing because if you partner, you don't know it's if the strategy well. will yeah. be the same. Exactly. I always say, if you do something, you need to be both in the boat because you cannot be half in it. You <laughs> no. really need to, yeah. to, to, to go in. Exactly. Um, then you can build it yourself, but building it yourself mostly costs time. And, and cash. It's, yeah. yeah, it costs time, it costs cash, and it's really hard to understand the, 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 the local market, which exactly. already, for example, when we, when we started in Belgium, it was it's so different. different than the Netherlands. Yeah. Belgium is quite, uh, it's, it's a tough market. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Like nothing is the same. I was so surprised that it was so differently. Um, so, so we learned that you really need local expertise and you need, ex you need experience in the team. 
Um, so when people wanted to start in in uh, Turkey, our supplier called and, and they mm-hmm. said, hey, they want to start, but they, they can't yet find the investment. We said, we're going to do it. We give them the vehicles. That's how we started in Istanbul. Like, why not doing Istanbul? We need to make shared mobility available for everyone. This is our this is this is our challenge. Let's do it in Istanbul. Sixty million people. That that, that's a chance. Big market. Yeah. Um, And then then of course Italy. So yeah. No. uh, Yeah. I was wondering when you. Uh, no, maybe please continue with Italy. Then I will ask the question after. <laughs> I'm too excited. That's why. <laughs> no, really good. So, so Italy. Um, when we ordered the first mopeds with a supplier, we we called the supplier and said, "Who else is using these vehicles?" And then they said, "Oh, there are two guys in Italy. They're using it, and and they're great guys." So we gave them a call, and that were Emmanuel and Diego, the the, the co-founders of Zigzag. Uh, both did an MBA in Madrid. Really clever guys knowing really good uh, about the product, about the software, about the hardware. Um, and, and we just had open discussion with them and they were totally open. They never said you're a competitor. They just helped. They said, if you want any feedback, let us know. Um, and we kept in touch. And um, two years later, we were having, let's say 10,000 vehicles and they were just still on 500 vehicles. So still, two really good entrepreneurs that were able to still, as they're one of the oldest sharing operators in Italy, active in Rome, Milan, Turin, Rome, like great cities, but didn't have the skill to go to 5,000, 8,000, 10,000 that you need in Italy because the market is huge. Only yeah. in Rome, you could put 4,000 vehicles in, and, and you would have a great city. So there we said the same. We want to give you the skill uh, we want to help in making sure we can we can at least scale five to ten cities in the upcoming mm-hmm. months. Let's do it together. And um, yeah, quite soon after we said, okay, let's do it. Let let's make sure we can start and and get also the scaling there. Wow, that's that's really nice because you know those are those entrepreneurs have been doing it with passion. Uh, you can tell, right? Because they have been even though they weren't able to raise the funding, but they still uh, you know sustainable. And st- kept continuing so you can see that they were doing it with passion and you can see that they really care about it right i think yeah. those are great people to partner with or to acquire and i think that's a very very great thing that you uh, as a company are doing uh, right uh, because you take care of uh, these people who are passionate but it's also a great business move right because they yeah. know the, the local business right so that's that's a genius move actually yeah, we're um, really doing then also M and A for the local management teams because that's something you cannot otherwise yeah. start yourself. That's really hard to find the right people, and really the performance in a country is is really depending on 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 the good country managers, the good local people. And yeah, um, yeah when we had the discussions, I, I was so impressed. They had even a lower budget than we had in the beginning, and they built own software, own hardware, oh, own IoT units, amazing. everything themselves. And I was just impressed by that little amount of, of budget they have, what, what they got out of it. So we just had to help them a little bit in getting the skill, but I'm sure that Italy will go, going to be one of our biggest markets in the, in the future. That's amazing. I was wondering when you actually acquired Scooty, uh, because I didn't read it about, about it in the press. I guess it's a, f- a year, a few, I mean, a few years ago, maybe, or is it, was it recent? Yeah. Because so tribe sharing we really acquired, um, and in in Belgium they stopped with Scooty, and uh, okay. Scooty was a customer of mine. I mean, I've sold them the vehicles. I, I knew oh, them really awesome. well. So I said, guys, you cannot stop. It's 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 a pity. I mean, Antwerp, Brussels, great cities. We want yeah. to start there. So we didn't took over any of the vehicles or anything. We just said to the people like, come here, and we will do it again. But then we're going to do it differently. And so uh, that's how we started in Antwerp and after, after a couple of months also Brussels. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Uh, that's amazing. If you ever want to do a uh, bike share, uh, Smooth City is uh, <laughs> active in West Flanders. Uh, so <laughs> um, we will see in the future anyways. <laughs> that's really great. Now I've seen the socials and I mean, it's, it's great to see. So next time um, we'll be in Belgium, I will test them for sure. Uh, I mean, you will get a promo code. So <laughs> <laughs> we, we do have a great green branding as well, right? It's uh, amazing. 